Hi guys, happy Wednesday and welcome to the morning after. This morning we are discussing episodes three and four of season four of Bachelor in Paradise. Um, God, I gotta say, it still feels like a lot. Four hours a week is like, I don't know if I love any show this much. And especially this season is lagging. I still feel like it's a little boring and they keep going back to the, um, the allegations and the, the big uh, drama from when they shut down filming and it's like, okay, we get it. It just sort of seems like we're never actually getting in to the show. But for now, I will go in chronological order as I always do in my videos. So a little bit on episode three that I didn't talk about in my FLIR recap yesterday because I spent the whole time talking about ethical players and Dean and Christina and I wish what I wish Christina had done or would do and how I thought Dean should have behaved. Um, but I gotta say, I really like Lacey's commentary. I think she's quite funny. She reminds me a bit of um, Carly from when she was on the show. She said, heading into the rose ceremony, I have a rose. You, you guys should be kissing my effing ass. I just thought this was quite funny. And she's not entirely wrong. And it did seem like the guys were just growing around, so it was pretty funny. Um, also, Raven on her, these are just notables from episode three, because I just, because I have a tendency to talk about the latest episode, so I want to get to this. Raven with Adam, on her date with Adam, she said, I want a relationship that I don't have to figure anything out about. I just want it to be easy. And I loved this line. Raven seems so bright and just, like, she knows what she wants. She's incredibly mature. I just loved this line. Um, also, how cute is it that Vinny does the guy's hair? Did anyone else pick up on that? There was, I think it was Ben Z when he was like, you know, there it was some voiceover of him talking about Raven and, and Vinny was doing his hair. It was super cute. And I also laughed out loud um, <laughs> when Jack Stone was talking to Alexis, you know, and he was like, oh, and I think you're really great. You're really funny. And she was like, and beautiful. And he's like, yes, yes, and beautiful. <laughs> And then she's like, you want this rose, bro? <laughs> it's really funny. And, um, and about Raven, because there was that little love triangle with Ben Z and Adam. I love Ben Z. And I talk about him in, in today's recap, but he didn't use his time with Raven very wisely. It worked out because he ended up getting Danielle M's rose, but... You know, Raven clearly is a sense of humor person, like she wants to laugh and joke around. And um, Adam, I think, you know, recognized that. And their time before the Rose Simran was a lot more lighthearted, while Benzie was like, I'm looking for something serious. And she's like, uh-huh. So <laughs> it was a bit of a shame because, yeah, I, I actually liked them together, but mm, so much for that. Um, Maureen says, I am so sad that Vinny is gone, and I completely agree. I kind of wanted to see him have his, you know, get his love story, but. Okay, so episode four. I love, I really love Matt. I think he's really shining through on, you know, we didn't get to see him a lot on Rachel's season. He said to Christina at the beginning of the episode about Dean, and again, he's a guy, he's obviously friends with Dean, but he's like, to Christina, he said, he's got this look on his face like he knows he's got your heart in his hands. And I just loved that he told her this because it really is, you know, some truth time that she needs to hear, I think. And I just thought that it showed that he really cared about her by saying that. It's tough to hear, but she needs to know that there's an imbalance of power. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't even write down the names of this one-on-one, -on -one, but I know who it's about based on what I wrote. It's between Lacey and Diggy. <laughs> and all I wrote was, this one-on-one -on -one is rough from beginning to end. What was the lead up, what was the lead up to this kiss? And then, quote, warm body in front of me, might as well kiss it. That's what I wrote. Uh, I just didn't, I mean, I th I, like I said, I think Lacey's really funny. But I just felt like Diggy was the one who said yes. And so they just went on a date. And then they were both on this date. And so they just might as well kiss. Like, it was just, there was nothing leading up to it. There was no chemistry. We didn't see any buildup of this relationship. So uh, that's why I have a hard time feeling bad for Lacey when Dominique came around. Because... It's not like she was, she had like some laser focus on Diggy and only wanted him. Like she just, she like talked to almost every single guy there and um, went with Diggy because he said yes. And so it's hard to um, feel that heartbroken for her that he so quickly turned around and went on a date with Dominique. 
Um, can we talk about Danielle M. and Wells for a second? Um, I think that, first of all, the fact that Danielle left is so unbelievably classy because it shows that she's just not around for the airtime. Like, she could have stuck it out and just been there for, I don't know, followers, airtime, whatever, and she just didn't. Like, she, and I felt like she was really sincere going into it. And that's why, I mean, it's so bittersweet when she had that kiss with Wells, which also came out of nowhere. Like, where did that come from? And... I just felt like robbed. I mean, it was really sweet, but I felt robbed. Like, what? Okay, we're talking about a cliffhanger. And they'd be such a dreamy couple. Like, they would be that golden couple that is sweet and that you want to watch. And so, um, oh wait, yes, yeah, someone said Danielle M and Wells made the episode. I will stuck. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. They made the episode, and it would have been just nice if. Obviously, I think it's good that she committed to leaving, especially since it sounds like it was for a good cause, but uh, I would have wanted to watch that. They were cute. Um, and yeah, and then the, I talk about the last hour, so the whole live segment thing in my flare recap. I mean, it's not good. <laughs> I don't have the greatest things to say about it. It just feels like rehashing. It really sounds like they're not afraid to uh, milk the drama for all that it's worth. Um, I don't know if I can blame them because maybe they just didn't have good material, but it just feels really, really boring. Um, sorry to say that, but yeah. Anyway, be sure to check out my Flare Recap where I delve into that, why I think it's boring, and yeah, and I talk a bit more about episode four. So yeah, my Flare Recap will be up soon, and thank you for tuning in to the morning after. Um, I so appreciate it, and it feels good to like sort of hash this out with you guys, because well, we, I think Andy's sick of hearing me <laughs> vent about it. Um, so yeah, I'll see you here next week on the morning after. Bye.